Hey, it's Pastor Mike. I'll keep this short because I know you want to listen to today's message. You're here because you want to continue growing in your faith, and we at Time of Grace want the exact same thing for you. Just visit us at timeofgrace.org, and you'll find a ton of resources at your fingertips, like sermons, videos, books, devotions, our blog, and of course, more podcasts. See you there. Yesterday, we saw how God brought Adam and Eve together as husband and wife. Immediately following that account, the next verse in the Bible gives us three ingredients for marriage, principles that'll set a firm foundation under a marriage. Uh, The verse goes like this, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And I just want to walk through that passage and, 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 and pull out those three ingredients. So the first thing the passage says is that a man will leave his father and mother. In other words, husband and wife are going to leave behind or refocus all those other relationships in their lives. So for husbands, um, your priority structure has changed. Same with wives. It now goes God, and then spouse, and then children, and then everyone else, including friends and, and, and family, even parents. Uh, so for husbands, when, when you, your friends want to go out on a Friday night, um, it's not just automatically going to be that you go out on a Friday night. You have a new priority structure. And of course, um, wives are, are so often um, wanting their husbands to have that time with friends, so very often they will have no problem with you going out with them. Um, very quickly, husbands, you'll learn which sure means yes and which sure means you better stay home. Uh, and for wives, it, it means that since your priority structure has changed, uh, your mother can no longer be the, the main marriage counselors, right? Or marriage counselor for your marriage. Um, First of all, think how awkward that is for for your husband if your mother knows all of the dirty laundry. And secondly, since your husband is now number two, second only to God in your life, um, you owe it to him to try to work out those issues together as a couple. And of course, if, if you can't, there are marriage counselors and there are pastors that you can talk to. So the first key is that husband and wife will leave behind or refocus all those other relationships in their lives. Uh, The second one is this. The passage says, So a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. So both the man and the woman will commit to each other by joining as a unit. Well, when does that happen? (laughs) Well, that happens on your wedding day. When you make that promise in front of God and everyone else that you are going to remain husband and wife for the rest of your lives. Now, anyone who's been married for more than a day will be able to answer this question. When you are united as a unit on your wedding day, do you have marriage figured out? Uh, No. (laughs) And that's why the third key is so important. Both the man and the woman, it says, will leave his father and mother, be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So both the husband and the wife will commit to becoming one flesh, to a lifetime of growing in unity, which often involves unselfish compromise. So, Did you catch the essence of marriage in those three ingredients? Uh, Maybe you'll catch it if I say them all quickly, all in a row. So both the man and the woman commit to each other by leaving behind or refocusing all those relationships in their lives. Uh, Both the man and the woman commit to each other by joining as a unit. And both the man and the woman commit to a lifetime of growing in unity. Did you catch it? It's love. No, it's commitment. The essence of marriage is commitment. And there are a ton of keys to commitment. I mean, it takes hard work, it takes priority, it takes love, it takes respect, it takes growth in God's word. But the most important key to commitment is seeing how totally committed God is to you as husband and wife. Jesus never gave up on your salvation, but he loved you all the way to a cross. And he still loves you today. He always loves, he always forgives, he always says, I'm not giving up on you. Now that's commitment. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, you committed to winning our salvation and now guiding us home to heaven. Use your total commitment to inspire us to commit to one another as husbands and wives. Amen.